Good evening, and thank you so much for coming out to Circle Sanctuary's Winter Solstice Pageant. Our show is just about to begin. We've got a few people coming in. If there's seats next to you and you kind of want to budge down a little bit, that'll help some of our stragglers. But first off, we'd like to thank, give so much thanks to First Unitarian Society for giving us this beautiful space. Can we give them a hand right there? We'd also like to thank the Crohn's Cradle Conserve, who has given us this wonderful mistletoe over here. At the very end of the show, you're gonna have the opportunity to take some of that mistletoe and take it home, and hang it in your house, bring a little bit of that solstice spirit back with you. We also want to thank Oakhaven for donating some of the beautiful greenery we'll be using tonight. And finally, thank you for coming. This is a production of Circle Sanctuary. Circle Sanctuary is a nature preserve and nature spirituality center. We are located on 200 acres of beautiful sacred land out in Barneville. So the proceeds from tonight's show go to support the many charitable works of Circle Sanctuary. And I'd also like to invite you all to if you really enjoyed you know, the spirit of Solstice tonight, want to do it a little bit more, then come on out tomorrow because we're having a full day Yule Festival. It's wonderful. There's a little bit of information about that in your program. Also in your program is the website, both for the Yule Festival and for Circle Sanctuary. So please take a moment, find out a little bit more about us. There's some information there on other ways to celebrate the Solstice as well. So if you get a little bit curious, you want to learn a little bit more, that's a great resource for you. And I do, want, um, I do want to take a moment and to thank our pageant director for tonight, Alexander James Adams. If you want to stand up, please give him a hand. Folks. He works so hard. Every single person performing here tonight is a volunteer. They're donating their time and their energy and their love here to make something magical. So let's just take a moment and give thanks to them. Thank you so much. And without further ado, I will turn things over to Circle Sanctuary's uh, Senior Minister, Selena Fox, who's going to begin our evening. Thank you so much. And thank you to Florence, who's been coordinating this event for many years. Thank you, Florence. <laughs> who's been to this pageant before? Uh, let's Doors. And who is brand new? We welcome you! So we're taking a journey tonight. We're going to begin in a few moments by honoring this sacred space. And then at the end, we'll have a chance to meditate on this one of the longest nights of the year. So in the next couple of minutes, I invite you to turn around and introduce yourself to at least one person you don't know and, and wish them happy solstice, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, whatever you want to call it. solstice pageant, but it is an international 
multicultural interreligious event. We celebrate the many holidays that happen. And what are some of those holidays that have been happening and that are happening now? Tonight is the Opelia. What is that? Ops, who gives us the word opulent. She was an earth mother from ancient Rome, an ancient form of the divine feminine. And this is part of a multi-day celebration called Saturnalia. And it's the fourth night of Hanukkah. It is the Yule time. It is the Christmas season. It is a time of many holidays. And we celebrate that diversity here within each of us and in the larger world of which we're part. So I invite all of you who would like to do so to rise up. We're going to honor the sacred directions, honor the sacred circle. And we begin feeling our connection with the earth beneath our feet, sky above us, and we give thanks for the good weather that made it possible for so many of you to come out tonight. And now in the next few moments, as I play this singing bowl, connect with Source, with Creator, with the Divine, according to your own tradition, Goddess, God, Great Spirit, whatever name or names that you connect with Source, with the Sacred Eye. And I invite you to experience a connection with the sacred and with love. And joining your voices in a free form chant, singing this note or one that harmonizes with it. continue on in a cycle of constant change. What if, when the sun set, 
It did not rise the next morning. Imagine the cry that would sound across the land. Hear the ache of the hearts of people who would wail in fear of the dark and its unseen threats. Yet within this dark, there are those who stand strong. They look past the fear of the dark and find hope in the night sky. On winter solstice, the longest night is filled with the glow of many stars. One star in particular is the most favored. Every seven years, Right before the dawn, after the longest night of the year, a blue star rises in the pre-dawn sky. She is Venus. Goddess of beauty and love, sailor salvation, and gentle guide of destiny. Rejoice in her rising. Let her be the harbinger of great joy and rebirth to the shadowed land. <coughs> the farther away one travels from the equator, the more extreme are the patterns of the sun. In the high north, for six months, the sun never completely rises and then never quite sets for the other six. In the northern lands of Norway, Sweden, and Finland, the longest night of the year is named Yule, which is the Nordic word meaning wheel. Being located above the equator here in the States, many of our holiday traditions come from the traditions of the Nordic year. One of the famous ones is the bringing of evergreens into the home, symbolizing the endurance in the winter cold. The German word Tannenbaum translates to fir tree, and the familiar carol is about the fir tree in its natural, pure beauty.
mankind finds itself without any benevolence from nature. We must all look within to find the sustenance needed to survive this turn of the wheel. Thus, this season is one of song, story, and prayer, reminding us of the importance of supporting family, friends, and even travelers that pass through, that we may all prevail against the most challenging days of the year. sharing of skills has been a common tradition. 
In the Nordic lands, the tale of Holda, the Gracious One, is one example of the spirit's generosity. Residing in her crystal palace, Holda shakes out her feather bed. It snows on the world below. She spins on a spinning wheel each day, getting a little slower each sunset, until on the winter solstice, the wheel stops. Then she descends to the land of mortals, fertilizing the fields and leaving gold for those who honor her by stopping their own wheels on Yule and for the 12 days following. Our Yuletide wreath is a symbol of her spinning wheel. And on the 12th and final day, people then honor Holda's dark twin sister, Berchta. We find her as the crone, the keeper of wisdom's light and the skills of man. Fish and oatcakes are eaten on this day to celebrate her gifts of knowledge that will keep mankind alive through the harshest days of the year. One of the skills of humankind the world over is the skill of storytelling. Stories for inspiring, teaching, and informing folk to be able to live amidst the chaos that is nature's domain. So I'm going to tell a story, and if the kids want to come up and sit here, I would really love that. Is this on? Very tall. Yeah, well, the kids are the age. You know, if there's adults that want to come, that's fine too. Come on down, come on down. So, tonight I'm going to tell you a story from the Slavi people. They usually have called them the Cherokee people. They come from North Carolina, that area on the East Coast. And during the awful times, they were sent off on the Trail of Tears by some of our ancestors to live in Oklahoma. But some of them stayed in North Carolina. And this is not actually a winter solstice tale, but it's all about the dark and the light. So it's really a tale that can be seen as important at this time of year. Okay. In the beginning, there was only darkness. And the animals stumbled around, and they bumped into trees, and into plants, and sometimes they fell into the river. Sometimes they even bumped into each other, and that could have been even worse. So after a while, they started to talk to each other, and they said they really didn't like this. They would like to have, what? Light. light. That's right, some light, so that they could see. And so, the cardinal asked them all to get together, and they came together, and the, she said to them, there is a rumor that on the other side of the world, they have something called the sun, and it gives light. Ah, said the animals, let's go and get some of that light. Then we'll be able to see. But some of the other animals said, ah, but maybe they won't like us to take their light. Oh, they talked about this for a while, and they decided maybe they should really just be very sneaky and go over to the other side of the world and take a little piece of it and bring it back. But how would they do that? Well, the opossum said, I know how to do that. I have a big furry tail, and what I will do is I'll go to the other side of the world, and I will put a piece of the sun in the ta my tail, and I will run back here. Now, so the next morning, and I don't know how he knew it was the morning because there was no sun in the sky. <laughs> the next morning he got up and he ran, well, possum's pretty much waddled, waddled to the other side of the world. And when he got there, the sun was so bright that he started to squint his eyes. And you might notice that a possum still squint to this day. So he squinted his eyes, and he jumped as high as he could and grabbed a piece of that sun, and he put it right in his furry tail, and he started to run back to our side of the world. 
But unfortunately, all the way that he ran, his tail burned and all of that fur burned completely off and the sun burned away. And to this day, opossums have a completely bare tail with no fur on it. So the cardinal decided that they needed to have another meeting so that all the animals got together again and they started to talk about how they were going to get the sun. And the turkey vulture said, well, now that we know it's in the sky, I'll go because I fly really well and I will grab a piece of that sun and I will put it in my feathers on the top of my head because I have a beautiful head of feathers. And then I will fly back here and we'll have the sun too. So the animals decided that sounded like a good plan. And the next morning, the turkey vulture got up. I don't know how he knew it was morning because there was no sun in the sky. And he flew as fast as he could to the other side of the world. And he grabbed a piece of that sun in his paws and he put it in his feathers and he flew as fast as he could back here to our side of the world. But on the way back, the feathers on his head burned and burned and burned all the way off and so did the sun. It went out. And so to this day, you will notice that vultures <laughs> have no feathers on their head. They're completely bald. So this was the second time that the people, the animals, didn't get what. And so Karma brought them all together again and she said, well, what will we do now? We've sent two animals and neither of them has succeeded. And then we heard this little voice that said, I think I can get the sun and bring it back. And the cardinal said, who are you and where are you? Oh, I'm Grandmother Spider. And I'm right here in the grass. And all the animals looked down and here was a very small spider in the grass. And the cardinal said, if a possum couldn't get the sun and turkey vulture couldn't bring the sun back, how do you think you can bring the sun back? And Grandmother Spider said, I'm very small, and I'm very quiet, so I will be unnoticed. No one will see me, and I will spin my thread, so I will know how to get back here. And so after talking it over, the animals decided that this was a good <coughs> idea, and they said, okay, Grandmother Spider, you go and get the sun. So the next morning, and I don't know how she knew it was morning because there was no sun in the sky. Grandmother Spider got up and she crawled. And as she crawled, the first thing she did was she scooped up a piece of clay in her hands and she molded it into a bowl. And she scooped up another piece and she molded it into a lid for that bowl. And then she kept crawling because, you know, spiders can only crawl and it took her a long time to get to the other side of the world. When she got there, she climbed up, she spun a web, but she did it very, very quietly, very, very quietly. And so she was unnoticed, and she spun a web up through the trees, up into the sky, and the web looked just like the rays of the sun. And you'll notice that to this day, the spiders have webs that look like the rays of the sun. And when she got to the sun, she grabbed a little piece and she put it in her clay bowl and put the lid on top of it. And then she followed the thread back to our side of the world. And when she got here, she lifted the lid off of the bowl and the sun rose for the first time. It was the first real morning. And the animals were so happy. They said, we will honor you, Grandmother Spider. You did something that was very difficult. And to this day, the Cherokee, the Slaggy people, honor Grandmother Spider because the women are the ones who make the pottery, just like Grandmother Spider did. And the women are the ones who weave, just like Grandmother Spider weaves her web. And I wrote a song for Grandmother Spider that I want to see to end this story. Grandmother 
that endure the winter solstice are things to be admired and revered. It takes strength to endure the harshness of the season. Anything which can survive must be recognized and honored. Among the plants, the best known is mistletoe. Legend has it that the Norse goddess Frigga honored her son Baldur by asking all of nature not to harm him, but overlooked the mistletoe when she made the request. Loki, Baldur's brother, then used it as a spear to slay Baldur. Odin, being the great father of all, returned life to Baldur, and Frigga then declared mistletoe to be a plant of love, never to be used in death again. Mistletoe became a place for rival clans to meet underneath, lay down weapons, and speak of peace. Thus also, it became a place for lovers to meet and kiss. Two other plants of the winter are holly and ivy, symbols of the yang and yin, the male and female, the balance of strength and endurance. Many a carol has been sung for them. Caroling itself was started long ago by pagan folk, who sang and chanted through the winter fields to drive the spirits of death and cold away from seeds sleeping in the ground. Singers would travel from homestead to homestead, singing blessings for the coming year and accepting warm drinks to counter the snow's chilling wind. and transcendence in the embrace of that which comes together despite differences. On the Indian subcontinent, people chant Sita Ram in celebration of Sita and Rama, the king and queen of the universe. Like the holly and the ivy, they are seen as the divine feminine and masculine, the earth and the sky, and together they represent the unity of divine spirit. Ah, 
With the rising of the reborn sun, the northern lands rejoice. Mankind breathes in deep relief that the shadows are lifted and life will now grow stronger with every new sunrise. The war of light and dark is over and a new reign of kingship is celebrated. The battle between the Holly King and the Oak King has come to finality and the sun rises in triumph to turn the wheel again. time traditions around the world is that of birth. At this time when the sun returns, many traditions speak of birth or rebirth of a god or king. Whether he be called Mithras, Emmanuel, Horus, or even Baby New Year, the return of the sun is often a time of celebrating new life. In Guinea, West Africa, Balakalanya is the name of a type of seabird that is connected with childbirth, much in the same way that European folklore speaks of a stork. Women who wish to have a baby leave offerings near the water in hopes that the Balakalanya will grant their wish. This tradition and the joy of anticipating a child are captured in a beautiful song of that land. Its words translate as Balakalanya, a child is the best thing. I bring you a hundred gifts. Bring me a child.
light and life stretch across the land. Music, bells, and dancing are everywhere as the celebration of the new light reflects in the eyes of all who meet each other in perfect love and trust. Story and song are heard as families gather together and friends travel to visit those who touch their lives and brighten their hearts. The legend of La Mathana hails from Italy and is a story that unites both pagan and Christian together. This is the story of a very humble countrywoman who can brew healing teas and who keeps a very clean house. One day, while sweeping her home, she was approached by three wise men traveling by starlight, visiting a newborn child of great renown. They needed to rest, and she, being very kind, offered them her home. Once rested, the three wise men invited her to join them, but she declined, claiming to have too much work at home. After they left, she found herself thinking of her own child that she had lost to death's hand at an early age. With a mother's passionate fire in her heart, she quickly left her house, broom in hand, to join them with her own gifts for the child. She traveled by starlight, whisking clean the houses of those who welcomed her, and giving a gift to every child she found along the way. When she became tired, her broom carried her, and she wore a shawl blackened with the soot from the chimney she had swept. Finally, on Epiphany Eve, she found the child of light, and by this time she had given so many gifts to so many children that she had pleased the young babe and was thus named the mother of all children. I need to find all the children.
solstice is the time to honor Gaia, the mother of all. She brings us the Lord of Light, the new sun, the king of the land. At this time, all miracles of life are precious and celebrated in many cultures, in many forms. trust that innocence embodies. 
Only through the open heart and the willingness to learn can we hope to continue to grow and become strong. Celebrate the child within yourself and those around you. Meet the solstice sun with the joy of rebirth and the unity of all mankind. The bitter bite of the winter cold brings memories of days of old when running from the shadows long, we sing ourselves a winter song. Now we're too diverse, we're too advanced. There's no song left, and we've not danced. Yet there remains one thing to learn. To perfect love, we must return. Rejoice, rejoice, standing hand in hand. Raise one voice all across the land. While the snow white stag in the silver dance, all dance in a circle. Side. 
we call to mind wonderful things, good things in the calendar year 2014 that have come our way that we've been part of. We silently reflect on blessings, on experiences of this solar year, this calendar year. this longest night we call to the powers of the sacred earth to bring healing and well-being to our physical bodies to bring healing and wellness to our vitality. And we call to the powers of the sacred water to bring healing and wellness to our emotions, our relationships, and we call to the powers of the sacred spirit to bring healing wellness to our souls blessings to each of us and to all of us at this solstice Turn our attentions to the community of life, of humans, of creatures, of plants, of the elements, the community of life on planet Earth.
to our sacred circle of community gathered here, part of the larger circle of life of which we are part. And in the next few moments of quiet, Let a prayer, a wish, an affirmation for some aspect of the planet as a whole, or some particular part of it, form in your hearts, in your minds, in your souls. Join our wishes together. Our well wishes with all of those celebrating winter solstice in the northern hemisphere, summer solstice in the southern hemisphere.
like a few moments looking deep within ourselves. What is something that we may do in the solar year that's beginning and the new calendar year that's 2015 to help bring about what we seek to have happen, the well-being for the greater circle of nature of which we are part. Reflect on that for a few moments. Experience yourself as a light of hope, of peace, of joy. Experience yourself glowing.
want to do rhythms to join in. The other songs were, We Carry the Light into this night and 